Hi everyone, and welcome to the channel. So today's project is not something that exactly fits on the workbench, so here we are on the shop floor. So recently, a family member picked up this very large and heavy-duty industrial job site ventilation fan, but the fan has a problem. So you can see there's a tag right here that says do not use. So definitely an issue going on, but there's nothing else on that tag indicating what the problem actually is. So when the owner of the fan saw that tag, he didn't try and power it up, and I've not tried to power it up either. Now the idea is that the owner wants to use this fan at his business, so he asked if I could repair it. If I can bring it back to life, then he'll put it into use at his shop. And if I can make it work, he'll take care of some of the cleanup issues. So for example, this front guard right here, which this is actually the air intake side, but this should be cleaned up. The center has quite a bit of buildup on it, so any contamination that's in the air tends to stick to this guard. And the fan blades should be cleaned up as well. There's some residue on the blades. Also, you can see there's kind of this blue paint that's misted across. The fan would have been painted black originally, so he might choose to repaint the fan as well, but those are just cosmetic issues, and again, just some general cleanup inside the fan. So this fan was manufactured by Eagle Industries. It's part of the Black Max series, and the model on this fan is the Max 20 TEAO. So the 20 means it's a 20 inch diameter fan, and this fan is rated at 9,500 CFM, which is cubic feet per minute. So it definitely moves a lot of air. And the TEAO is the type of motor that this fan has. It's the standard motor. So it's a dust proof motor, very, very rugged and heavy duty type of motor, but it's not for hazardous locations where you might have a flammable vapor or something like that. So there's another version of this fan that is for use in hazardous locations, it has a special type of switch, some other things like that. So this is just for very dusty type uh, locations and where you need to move in fresh air. And this fan weighs about 85 pounds, so definitely an arm load to move around. It's all a steel enclosure, very, very heavy duty, cast aluminum fan blades. And one of the first things that I did is I reached in here, I just like this and spun the fan. So you can see it turns very easily. So it means that the motor is not seized up. The bearings seem to be in good condition. I'm not seeing anything like a broken fan blade or a chip or a crack in the fan blades. So I think the problem is going to be electrical. So it doesn't look to be a mechanical problem. And uh, you know the housing or this you know, enclosure doesn't look to be damaged like it was dropped or abused or something like that. So really the fan is in good condition just uh, physically. So I think it's going to be an electrical problem so we'll take a closer look at that and start the troubleshooting and see what we need to do. Now, I've just kind of looked over the fan and I noticed that to do anything with the electrical, even testing on this cord right here, so let's, for example, say this plug on the end right here, which does seem to be a little loose and should be replaced. The, the strain relief right here has is, is come loose on that cord. But the other end of this cord and where it goes down into the box and where the power switch is, is not the easiest to get into. It's riveted on to this round tubular part of the housing. So I'm gonna to have to drill out several rivets to even get into the electrical. So let's take a closer look and see what we're dealing with. All right, so here's a view looking at the other side of the fan. So this is the side where the air exhausts out. You can see the fan motor. So that's a one horsepower motor. Very heavy duty design. It's sealed against dust and other contaminants. So meant for extremely harsh conditions, exactly where this fan would be running. And then you can see the power cable coming into the motor. So it comes from the box where I need to remove the rivets. There's a strain relief where it goes into that box and then it comes down over into a seal and then into the motor. So that cable looks to be in good condition. I don't see any cuts or damage on that cable. All right, so taking a closer look at this electrical box on the side, you can see there's four rivets, two on the top, and then there's two on the bottom, so it holds this whole box to this round tubular part of the housing. So to get inside of here, you have to remove those rivets. I'll have to drill them out. Of course, I can replace them. That's not a problem. Now, this cord right here on the end is a little bit loose. That strain relief is not in the best of shape, so it needs a new plug. Has something gotten damaged and fallen apart inside the plug? Well, possibly, but we'll have to do a continuity test to check that. And to even do that continuity test and get to the other side of this cord requires opening up this box and again, you have to drill the rivets out. And there's a toggle switch right here. And of course, a switch would be something that could wear out. And to test that switch, of course, again, got to get inside the box. And I noticed the cord, of course, it's a cord wrap right here, the storage. 
but ultimately the cord comes around and it goes inside the box right here and there's supposed to be a strain relief but it's missing so the you know this cord is loose right here and it's been twisted around and i'm wondering if something got pulled loose or worst case it could be a short circuit inside of there and that's obviously why you don't want to plug this in if there's a bare wire or something in there that's come off and is touching the housing it could be a big problem so definitely going to have to inspect inside of here so i'll get started drilling those rivets out and we'll see what we're dealing with All right, so I have the tops of the rivets drilled off. I still need to drill the remaining pieces of the rivets out, but I'll get to that in just a moment. But the switch box is loose. So pardon the fan noise you might be hearing in the background. It's about 95 in the shop today, so pretty warm out. But check this out. There's a problem. So this wire is just floating around in here, and obviously it's supposed to be attached to that switch terminal. So the reason this came loose is because there's no strain relief on that power cord. And since the strain relief went missing, the power cord was just being twisted around and it got pulled and then this wire came right off of that terminal. So I'll get a new strain relief installed. I'm going to replace this power switch. This switch has a lot of hours on it and given the effort it takes to get into this switch box, now is the time to replace this toggle switch. And over here on the power cord, so if I just hold the cord stationary like so and twist the plug on the end, and obviously that's not the way it's supposed to be. So this strain relief isn't doing what it's supposed to do. So I'll get a new plug installed as well. All right, so I have the switch box out of the way, but before I continue on with the repairs, like replacing the power switch and the other things that I previously mentioned, I wanna take some resistance measurements just to make sure there aren't any other problems that are hiding. So I'm gonna grab my digital multimeter right here. I'm going to set this into the resistance mode like that. See the display okay? Yep, no glare on it. So it says OL, which is overload or infinity for resistance because the test leads are apart. If I touch the test leads together, of course it goes to a very low value, about 0.2 ohms. And of course that's the residual resistance in the test leads. So I'm going to grab this little adapter right here. So this is an alligator adapter that goes on the end of the test probe. Like that. So I'm going to clip this onto this black wire there in the terminal. So the first thing that I want to check is continuity through the motor windings. So this wiring right here that comes up from the motor, we have the black, the green, and the white. So the green is the earth ground or a safety ground. It goes to the chassis. So the motor should have continuity from the black to the white, which is the AC hot to the AC neutral. And this splice right here, I can see some metal down inside of there, so I should be able to probe right down onto there. And yes, we do have continuity. So that's very good to see. So it's 0.9 ohms. So a very low value. And that's to be expected because this is measuring using direct current. Because obviously battery operated and it's just direct current that's flowing out through this meter to make the resistance measurement. Now the motor is supposed to run on alternating current, you know, 60 hertz. So when the motor is operated on 60 hertz, it presents a very different and much higher impedance than what we're seeing here by measuring with DC. So again, this is a very low value, but that's to be expected. So no problems there. And it's good to see that the motor isn't damaged like a burned open winding or something like that. So another thing to check for is from the hot and also we can go from the neutral, but we know there's continuity through them. So we can just go from this one side should be fine. But to check from the AC line to earth ground, we don't want to see any reading there. So I think in this connector here, I can see some metal right down inside of there like that. And yes, it is an open circuit. So that's also very good to see. There's no short to ground. That's good. And if I go and just take that off. Again, it shouldn't matter, but if I probe from the neutral to earth ground, it should also be open. Down there like that. And on this side, yeah, it's an open circuit. And we already saw continuity from the black to the white, so it's uh, you know it's the same thing. If you measure from the black to the green, no, again knowing continuity from black to white, you're going to get the same result if you go from white to the to the green wire. 
So no problems there. I'm not seeing any issues with the motor. Now another thing that I can check is to make sure that there is continuity from the green wire to the frame for the safety ground. We want to see a continuity measurement there. So I'll go into this hole where the rivet was because it's got polished out when I drilled it out. And if I go to the green wire, and yes, there we go, 0.2. Very good reading there, no problems with that. So we, again, do want to see that continuity. Now something else that I can check is to make sure that the power cord, you can see it looped around over here, isn't damaged like a smashed wire in this cord or a short circuit going on. So if we go right here, this wire is the black from the cord side and then this white wire. So I'm gonna just grab this alligator clip again, makes things a little easier. Clip this back onto this side. So if I go into the connector here, and yes, it is an open circuit. So perfect, no problems with that. There's no damage to the cord. And again, if I go from the AC hot in the cord to the ground, should be an open. Yes, it is, so no problems there. And I think we basically already did this test, just to double check. When we go across the AC neutral to ground is essentially the same thing as when we're looking at the motor side because this is just going off to the cord and we already did this. We go from that side to there and again we already saw that was an open circuit. So there's no short circuits in the cord. The motor has continuity. Nothing is shorted to the uh, frame of the fan. So I'm not seeing any other issues going on which is very good news. And of course the resistance measurements are not completely conclusive that everything is okay because for example the motor might have a defective start winding or a defective centrifugal switch that would prevent it from starting and the resistance measurements can't detect those sorts of faults. Now this motor does not use a capacitor for starting or for running so there are types of AC motors that use capacitors in the start circuit or even in the run circuit and sometimes both but again this motor does not use a capacitor at all so this motor has two types of windings inside of it. The one is the run winding that's always connected to the AC line. The other is the start winding. And the start winding is only connected to the AC line while the motor is starting. There's a centrifugal switch inside the motor and that centrifugal switch opens a set of contacts once the motor comes up to a certain operating speed. It takes the start winding out of the circuit and then just the run winding is left. So I'll continue on with the repairs and let's see what happens when we try to power this up. I think the motor probably is going to be okay just given the fact that this was tagged as do not use but we already found a fault where there was a loose wire. All right, so the wiring is back in place inside the switch box. I also replaced the two crimp terminals that are on the wiring going to the power switch. The original terminals didn't look like they were in very good condition. Now I installed just this one rivet to hold the switch box in place. And I'll install the other three rivets after the initial power up test if everything works okay. But in case I have to get back inside the switch box, I'd rather drill out just one rivet than have to deal with all four. So these are pop rivets. They're very easy to install. So I just put two rivets in place. One is just acting as a locator. And the other rivet is the one that I actually installed. And then I took the second rivet back out again. So it, again, it was just loose, just locating the hole to line up. And you use the appropriate tool, give several squeezes on the handle, and the rivet pops off, and you're all set, good to go. Right, so I just need to install the plug on the end of the power cord. So I'm using this very high quality Hubble plug right here. You can see the box, part number. Make sure that's touched up and all the way in focus there. So Hubble is a very good brand. And of course the plug has the correct electrical specifications. Now on the cord right here you can see, let me get this touched up here. So of course it's the standard color code with the green, the black, and the white. So green is earth ground or safety ground, white is neutral, the black is AC hot. And on the plug end right here, you can get this touched up a little bit, like that. So you've got black goes to the brass, white goes to silver, and of course the green goes to the earth ground right there. 
So never want to get the AC lines switched around. And of course, if the green were to be connected over here to the hot or something, you'd have a direct short, all kinds of problems. So be very careful if you're connecting a plug like this that you do get the wiring in the correct locations. And if you're following along and working on a project like this, you're definitely doing so at your own risk. So take care and be safe, especially around any type of AC line powered devices. All right, so I'll continue on getting this plug installed and then we'll do the test and see what happens. Also, one other thing to note, never tin the wires on the end of the cord when you're installing a plug like this. Okay, do not tin the wires. They're supposed to be, you know, just the stranded wire. You can give a couple twists on the wire and then they go under the screw terminals on that plug. But never tin the wires and don't use a solid core type of wire, like Romex wire. These plugs are never meant for that type of wire. What happens is the plug would come loose on the end of the wire. All right, let's try and power this thing up and see what happens. Now the data plate on this fan indicates that it draws quite a bit of power to start. So I have this plugged into an AC outlet in the shop that's right off the breaker panel. There's nothing else on that circuit, so this motor can draw all the current that it needs to get started. Also, this is the suction or the inlet side. So if there's any junk in here that comes loose, it won't be coming back at the camera. It'll blow out the other side. All right, here we go. Wow, that moves a lot of air. Really impressive. Very loud too. That may overwhelm the microphone completely with the noise level there, but uh, excellent. Looks like it's working. <laughs> the whole shop, the air is just circulating in here. There's like a breeze just everywhere. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, so success. Very happy that the motor is in working condition. No issues going on there. So like I already mentioned, the owner of this fan is gonna take care of some cosmetic issues and general cleanup on it, and then he'll be able to put it into use at his business. And we'll get rid of these tags over here because this is in working condition now. So cut those off. Like that, get those out of there. All right, so as always, thank you for taking time to watch. See you next time.